Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone's a Millionaire with your host, David Dodge. Today I have a good friend, fellow real estate investor, millionaire, entrepreneur, Mr. Jim Manning. Jim, how's it going, brother? Good to see you, man. Oh, it's going great. What's that happening, everybody? Happy to be here. Awesome, man. We're happy to have you here. This is a short and sweet podcast. It is designed to be bite-sized and uh, quick, all right? So I'm just going to ask you five or six questions. You don't know these questions, all right? The audience is probably thinking that you know them. You don't. We just jumped on. Here we go, Jim. I'm really happy to have you. Um, And really quickly, I haven't done this this podcast in a minute. I need to give you the opportunity to just introduce yourself to the audience. I don't know why I'm in a hurry. I need to slow down. Jim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Just, you know, one minute, two minutes, quickly, though. Yeah, so Jim Anning, I've been a real estate investor for 16 years. Uh, I own um, uh, three companies uh, that uh, do different parts of real estate deals. And then I'm a real estate fund manager as well, uh, where we help people uh, that are earning money uh, replace their income and and ultimately get to financial freedom uh, from their couch without having to do any work they can uh, invest into real estate. Phenomenal. I love it. And Jim is an awesome guy, guys. He's a, been a friend of mine for seven or eight years at this point. He's truly just an amazing human as well. So, all right, here we go, Jim. Thank you for that. Appreciate you being here. Number one, what was your biggest financial mistake or setback and how did you recover from it? Oh, the biggest one. So we bought a, um, uh, we bought a house in Kirkwood uh, that had major foundation issues and water issues. And we didn't think that that was going to impact our after repair value at all. So we put a tremendous amount of money into this property and um, uh, then it just sat on the open market. And while it was sitting, we decided to dig our hole further and we bought a red barn. And that red barn, uh, we did a price per square foot analysis. We thought that it was going to sell for a couple hundred thousand and, but we put it on the market and no one wanted to buy a red barn. Shocker, right? <laughs> um, and then uh, we bought a uh, additional property that also had foundation issues uh, and was sitting on the market. So I got into a place at that point where I was living on credit card debt and uh, all of my money was invested into these three properties. And the problem was that I had uh, I needed the properties to sell in the right order to be able to afford to pay the losses off on one of them because I had more equity in the in, in the other one. So while this was going on, uh, I decided to go and uh, visit my grandmother in the hospital and the overwhelm of my financial situation and uh, uh, my grandma was very sick. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, my grandmother's gonna die and I fainted. I completely passed oh, out. Man. And I'm 6'2". So uh, imagine waking up with your brain scrambled on the floor, not knowing what happened. And uh, I had had, I ended up passing out, hitting my head on concrete. I had two seizures. 
and my brains were completely scrambled at that time. And uh, so I'm in credit card debt. I had the seizures. And when I had those seizures, um, uh, you're not allowed to drive for six months. Oh. So, so now I'm facing all of this that's going on. And the hospital that I was in was, uh, was a smaller hospital up in, in North County here in St. Louis. And they weren't allowed to do all the tests on, until Monday. And this happened on a Saturday. So I remember sitting in my hotel room just thinking like, and praying to God, thinking like, okay, like I have no idea what's going to happen here. Um, but uh, if, if I'm not dying, if it's just this one-time thing, I will do whatever you need me to do to make this right. And, and at that time, uh, my girlfriend, uh, that's my now wife, um, uh, she was there all along the side with me the whole time and, uh, you know, spade spent all weekend with me. And I remember also praying to God saying, Hey, if, if I'm okay and I'm not dying, uh, just help me. I want to figure out whatever I can do to marry this girl. Mm-hmm. Like she's my one. I don't, I can't afford a ring but I'm going to, I'm going to try and figure out how to make this happen. So, so then when I got out of the hospital, uh, instead of being an investor for a little bit, we decided to do deals as, as realtors, as real estate agents. And we ended up just, uh, we ended up, fi- I found a, a, a kid that, um, was an intern to drive me around and, uh, we sold 50 houses that year, 50 short sale deals. So this was back in 2010 and, uh, fortunately the houses ended up selling in the, in the right order. So I was able to take some of the equity that I, or some of my own cash and pay off the loss on, on the second property. And all of those other deals came through, uh, and we were able to then save up enough money to buy a ring for my wife. And, and, um, uh, uh, and then the rest is the history. Then we kind of went on a, a nice little run after that. And, and what I learned from that was, um, I got so crystal clear on like why I was doing it and it didn't matter that I couldn't drive. It didn't matter that I was in credit card debt. It didn't matter that, um, uh, I had overcome these three terrible properties, these huge mistakes that I made. Um, I was going to figure it out and, um, and, and I definitely had some help from the big guy upstairs too. <laughs> within it too. I, I think I was, uh, he was looking after me, but, um, uh, but that was like just such a, a pivotal point in my life. And, and, um, uh, it was not easy. It was one of the hardest things I've ever been through. And, uh, that allowed me that pressure uh, that allowed us to, to found, uh, uh, you know, a three doors, one of our companies that kind of went on to then do several, uh, has done several thousand deals since then. So, um, uh, but it, uh, oh man, it was hard to, it was hard to get there. It was a lot of pain. To yeah, go. That's the story of persistence right there. I love that. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing that. Yeah. Um, damn, yeah, that does sound like a lot of problems, man. Tons of them. But look, you know, you overcame all of it and wow, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Let's not to abundance, man. Yeah, and it's um you know, like sometimes it's just a matter of just keep going, you know. Like yeah. and you know, I, I just got into this headspace where I was like, okay, I'm not gonna be negative about it. I know what I'm going through is incredibly painful. I know that it's a struggle and I'm going to keep going. And I, and, and at some point I'm going to figure this out and it's going to work out for us. Man, one of my favorite quotes of all time, top three, the, the, uh, the sex that it's, it's, I don't even know who said this. So I heard it from somebody. I definitely didn't make this up myself or create this, but the, the success equation is consistent, persistent action. And it, and that's it. That's all there is to it, right? It's consistent, persistent action. And if you don't give up and you, you know, just keep going, like you said, it may not happen quickly, but if you don't give up, you're going to, you're going to have success. You will achieve whatever you set out to do. So, man, that's awesome. Jim, great. That might've been the greatest answer to that question yet. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Number two. Can you share some specific strategies or tactics that you have used to increase your income and net worth? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, when we were, uh, when, when I was in my twenties, we started scaling our rehabbing business. Okay. 
And we got up to 120 flips at the same time. Yeah. At the same time? Yeah, yeah. How that, many? That was 120. Yeah, that was I our think record. I'm at, I think my record was 18. Yeah. And, Holy cow. And here's the deal, okay? So as impressive as that sounds, as cool as that sounds, I need to make, sorry guys, I need to make sure my stuff didn't turn off. As cool as that sounds, we made less money that year uh, than when we than when we were doing 50, 60 rehabs at a time. So what happened was we were on the quest for more deals. It's like, oh, how can we do more deals? Let's do as many deals as we possibly can. And when you increase your business revenue, but then your business expenses increase at the same time, or in some cases, the expenses start to exceed, exceed. the revenue that you have coming in. And, and that's what happened to us that year. Um, uh, we end up like uh, making a little bit less money. And we were, I was looking at I was looking at the ops team and like uh, D who's still with us, our transaction coordinator was like hating life. She's like, what did you guys do to me? Why'd you buy these <laughs> extra hundred <laughs> houses in a package deal? Right. Like, and then like everyone's like on fire basically because uh, our business wasn't prepared to to take that big of a leap um, to go from uh, around 120 house buys a year to uh, at that that time we did, I think it was 300 buys uh, was what we did. So we So we almost doubled the buys that we, uh, that we did, and um, and and then we then then we we did all this extra work. Then we had less money at the end of the day, and so so then we kind of whittled it back down. We kind of got back control over it, and then like have had more of a, like a steady day growth. But anyway, so we got onto this deal, this flipping like hamster wheel, and then what we then what we realized was like, oh holy cow! Like we've been doing this for a long time. That house that we just sold for three hundred thousand dollars four years ago, that thing's worth four fifty now. Like we're working really hard that, right now. I had that to too. earn that. Yeah, to earn to earn that income. Whereas if we just started holding on to stuff and holding on to assets, we're going to make a whole lot more wealth. We're going to generate a whole lot more wealth over time. And the thing with house flipping, guys, is that it's a job, just the same way a doctor makes income or uh, insert whatever profession. It's income that's coming in that you can then take. You can take a surplus of income and invest it into more buy and hold wealth building strategies. So what we do now, and like we have a real estate fund that that, that helps us with this, is is the deals we do, 90 plus percent of the deals we do are all helping us tomorrow. We're buying them and we're holding on to them. And then, you know, where we're going to, you know, so when we start on January 1st, well, we have a 365 day head start from where we were last year and we're keeping on building and we're keeping on building and we're keeping on building. Uh, so that has been absolutely invaluable for us is to uh, start to, to play the long game and looking at investments from the long window. I mean, that, yeah, another amazing answer. This is awesome, Jim. Thank you. All right. Number three. Uh, did you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building? So I'm not asking who, I'm asking how, okay? And if so, how? Uh, the approach to wealth building. Um, well, first, you know did you have any wealth, did you have any men to, uh, uh, any role models or mentors? Because everybody I, on the show so far, other than one guy said yes uh, to that question. So I have now it's on wealth building specifically, I think it's almost been like a collection of like a learning from like a lot of people. So yeah, like, lots of them. Same with me. I got but 40 like, of them, right? Yeah. And yeah. I don't think I can actually like pinpoint. That's okay. You don't have to. Where I, with the body of knowledge that I have now, what I can tell you is, is the strategy that I like to do um, is I view wealth building uh, that we have different pieces of our net worth that are that have different jobs, okay? So we have, just like our human body, we have hands that have a function. We have eyes that have a function. We have feet that have a function, okay? So a lot of people, I think, make a mistake and they say, hey, well, what's the return on this investment? What's the return? And then they try and compare two returns to each other. Well, that's great, except if the money that you have is supposed to be your feet or is supposed to be your foundation, well, the returns don't matter as much there. So I had a really hard time getting a cash nest egg, okay? And when I had a cash, when I, so every time I had some money in my bank account, I was like, oh, it's burning a hole. I'm not getting a return. Dang. I'm not getting a return. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that money is working really hard for you just in a checking account. Even if it's a 0%, you don't put it in a, have a sweep account that can get you some returns uh, like what we have. But even if it's 0%, that is your fortification. That is your liquidity. If a life event happens to help you not get knocked out of the game. Yes. So, th- so that's invaluable. Okay. That. So, so you have cash reserves. Okay. So that's the base, right? I love that. And then I believe this is what's worked for me is that real estate is and long-term buy and holds with passive income uh, is the next foundational piece. And then you can, because you can build income, you can then one day replace your income and the returns it's as well. Like, um, uh, uh, like I wouldn't compare, like I view the passive income, I'm a cash flow investor is way more valuable than returns on the stock market, for example. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then when I, so since I've had the foundation of passive income in place, now I can go for high, like super high risk, high return uh, investments. So like uh, I invested into a pharmaceutical company and I might lose 100% of that money or I might get a thousand X return. Uh, on, but you're and, aware of I'm, that. Yeah. I'm not going to know for a few years. And right. here's the cool part about that is I don't care if right. I lose all my money in that right. investment. Because I already have a foundation set up uh, that's going to take care of me long term. Love that. So, so that's really how I view it. And uh, I'm not a huge stock market guy. And and one of the reasons I'm not like a huge stock market guy is, um, I mean, I, I think I'm getting long winded here, man. No, no, you're doing this great. Might be you're a lot going uh, into a record the next question. A record, perfect, like okay, yeah, great. Um, but like when I look at like um, like a blockbuster, for example. Blockbuster got up to over a $5 billion valuation Unbelievable. At, the, uh, at its height. And then like eight years later, because of a market shift, it doesn't even exist anymore, right? One left. There's one. And it's like- And it's, and yeah, it's not and there the to sell- It isn't even selling videos or any more rentals. It's re- to rent the store out because of, uh, you know, just, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so, so, so to me, like, and you know, because I know real estate, like, like real estate, like, okay, a bad tenant comes in or something like that. And yeah, you have some repairs and invest your cash flow for a little bit. Well, at the end of the day, there's somebody still has to live somewhere. There's a roof that's a tangible asset. And so appreciate all um, your interest is uh, deductible, all that stuff, right? It's the world's best investment. If you yeah, ask me, like, yeah. and if you ask a lot of millionaires, uh, uh, it's the world's best investment. Right. So uh, so, so I really, I'm a like leery on like the environment we're in with the stocks and I mean, heck even look at like Anheuser-Busch, right? Like, uh, you have an environment where like, uh, that's, there's maybe a pending recession. People aren't quite sure right now what's happening. Uh, beer is normally people buy more beer during recessions. Normally that would be like a great, you know, logical thing to say, okay, well I have, I can put some money into AV. Well, they put a social media post out that a lot of their buyers don't like. And then here they are, 30 per- they took a 30% hit on their company and a 30% swing. So the volatility now and the uncertainty now is like is an all-time high. And I, and I like to keep it simple. I like four walls. I like a roof. I like something I can hey, touch. People something think real that, estate's complicated, but it's not. It's, the, it's you know, the simplest investment or asset there is. That's right. So, yeah, well... Yeah. Uh, let's go into number four and you kind of already answered it, but let, maybe just summarize if you can go. So number four is, is how do you balance the risk and reward when making investment decisions? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the, you're right. Yeah. I, I had some similar comments there. Um, uh, I do like investments that I really like, feel like I understand. Uh, so I got approached with an opportunity to invest into a oil rig company. And it was somebody I had known for four years, someone that I did trust um, uh, because, of, you know, I had spent days with this individual. So this wasn't just like a, like any Joe Schmo off the street. And uh, he kept talking to me about this investment and I just couldn't wrap my head around it. I was like, uh, like it sounds risky. I'm not really like quite sure about it. So I ended up not investing. And uh this person ended up raising hundreds of millions of dollars for this investment. Uh, and it turned out to be a Ponzi scheme and it was completely, they were giving high returns because they were paying, um, and they were like Bernie Madoff and right? they were Man, I think uh, I new money, new investors money. They were paying old investors, the returns. So, 
so the whole thing fell apart. And so like one of the keys with like the risk element is uh, uh, just making sure you have your, your head wrapped around it and, and, like the, and that you understand the strategy. And if you don't, uh, what I, sh- you know, I ended up not investing if I, if I had gone down the rabbit hole further, uh, I have a friend that knows a lot about oil rig investments. So like, like uh, seeking like wise counsel from like other people can really help you de-risk it as well. And particularly somebody that is like into industry and, and, and would know like what to do. All out of the, all the hundreds of millions of dollars I got invested in this investment, uh, had someone just gotten in their car and driven to where they said the rigs were, they would have found out that they weren't real. So, Man, you know. the funny thing about Ponzi's is they work so well because greed is such a strong emotion. Wow. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that's right. So the way that you're balancing risk and reward, sum that up for me, would just be to not invest into things that you don't understand or that you're not comfortable with? I mean, is that- Yeah. Yeah. Say? Make sure that you understand it. And then, uh, um, you know, it's helpful to have the similar values as, as the people operating it too. you know, make sure that, um, a lot of it is on the, uh, on the operators of, of the investment vehicle. Uh, so, you know, if you have to have that no like, and trust factor too. Man, uh, wow. I'm glad to hear that you didn't let greed overcome because it has overcome me out of about $400,000 in my lifetime. Just stupid investments that I'm like, oh, it's a no brainer. And then four months later, they're out of bank, out of business. So glad to hear that. All right. Last question, Jim, thanks again for being here, man. These, this is, might be my favorite episode this far. You got Amazing answers. Tons of value here. Number five, looking back, this is my favorite question too. Looking back, what advice would you give to your younger self about managing money and building wealth? Hold on to more of it. (laughs) Agreed. Hold on to more of it. Just, just hold on to it. When you, um, uh, so I thought like back when I started, I thought I couldn't afford, uh, to buy real estate and hold on to it. Cause like I started out with zero, I was huge, insanely blessed. I didn't have any student debt, but I started out with a zero on my bank account. And we all do. We're born with a zero. Well, yeah. And then some of us have families that they, you know, you go down, stuff, right. But right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so anyway, so when I had the zero and I was looking on the, the multiple listing service, there's all these amazing deals that you could just buy and hold on to. And I said, I don't have the money. I can't afford this. And at the same time, I knew that this was a great opportunity. Like it, you could just, it was obvious. Everybody knew it. So what I, the, the thing that I did wrong though, was just because I didn't have the money doesn't mean somebody else didn't have the money. So I needed a who, okay. I needed the right who to find that individual that then that then I could partner with and I would have been the act. I was the active investor. I could have bought a hold on to it. And, you know, I mean, I would have a lot more zeros under my net worth had I started out doing that. You know, we ended up shifting, uh, I we ended up getting more serious about buys and holds back in like 2017. Right. Well, I could have had another whole decade of buying and holding, you know, and like the majority of my net worth has came from the last, uh, the last several years on, on this buy and hold. Um, so, you know, and, and, and yeah, I mean, that's, so the advice is simple guys, hold on yeah. to these assets, yeah. hold on to them, sell the ones that you need that to, to be able to pay the bills and to have a good life. But, you know, I read a really great, uh, quote, maybe even this morning or yesterday is super recent. And it said, um, oh man, there's my phone. Cause I know it's really, really handy. Um, it said, this is such a great quote. Such a great quote. I'm going to find this right now. It said, the reason most people fail instead of succeed is it is that they trade what they want most for what they want at the moment. Wow. You got to hold on to it. You got to fight that urge to go buy that fancy new belt or take the cool fancy vacation. And I'm not saying don't buy cool things and take vacations. But do it responsibly, right? Hold on to these things. Wow. Jim, thank you so much just, for coming on this show. 
Yeah. Um, it went a little long, but that's okay. It was for good value. And again, I am incredibly grateful um, that you are here. And I'm incredibly grateful to have you in my network and to be one of my friends. Guys and girls, if you are wanting to connect with Jim, Jim, I'd assume it's PassiveWellShow.com would be the place to go to, to learn that's more about right. you. Yeah, your, your yeah that's that's right. Yeah, and I have we have like a, a Calendly call link thing that you can uh, schedule a call. And then uh, we also have... Um, and we have some uh, a free course on passive income, and now you can can invest uh, in a way that's not actually adding another full time job on the on your plate uh, for those of us that are already have our plates really full. So, um, so yeah, so make sure you ch- uh, check out that course, and and happy to help any way I can, guys. Jim, thanks for being here. One last thing, we just this is the second podcast Jim and I are doing. We did one for my other podcast, the Discount Property Investor, mm-hmm. and I just I have to reiterate this because it. I wrote it down. That's how much I like it. Uh, I asked Jim to give the audience some parting words. And Jim said, correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, success should not or shouldn't be measured based upon what, or I screwed it up. Success should be measured based upon what you had to give up to get it. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got there. I yeah. butchered it a little bit. Success yeah, yeah, let, would be measured based upon what you had to give up to get it. And I think that that right. goes in line with this podcast, the topics and the value that we have created here today. You know, you got to find balance and just, wow, just, just let that quote resonate. Jim, thanks for your time. I know you got to get home to your family. Have a great rest of your day, friend. Thank Take you. care, buddy. See you, bud. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, Leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off.